My Hero Academia has introduced us to some very pretty overpowered quirks and usually the higher up the hero rankings you go, the more busted the quirk is or the more versatile the quirk is and as we saw with the former number one hero in Japan, All Might, his power was of legendary proportions with worldwide recognition but over in America the quirk of the number one hero for the United States is pretty overpowered as well and with My Hero Academia's newest season upon us, you probably got some questions about the quirk of Kathleen Bates better known as Star and Stripe which is why in today's newest My Hero Academia video we're going to be explaining everything you need to know about the quirk before you watch the new episodes of the season which for anime only viewers this video will be safe for you to watch though there will be light spoilers. The quirk of Star and Stripe is called New Order which is a emitter type quirk that allows her to issue a rule onto her surroundings by touching her target and speaking their name. When this is done she is able to manipulate and add new properties onto herself and the world around her. For instance, this allows Star and Stripe to add new abilities to herself and manipulate the physical condition of her opponent's body. Descriptions can be used to make more conditional changes that are based on cause and effect. The power of her quirk, it isn't just limited to herself or her enemy. She's able to affect things such as the air, laser beams, rockets, and even other quirks that are around her. And as we'll touch on later on in the video, this power of hers, it can be traced back to a concept that exists in Japanese culture and mythology, which is why I think it is hands down the coolest quirk in the series. The way that her power is used in universe is that it is a power, a quirk that can redefine what it is to have a quirk. For instance, she can impose her own rules onto her own quirk, New Order, and alter its nature and the effects of her quirk. The rules that are set upon New Order, they remain active even in the event that the quirk is removed. However, if this sounds like this might be just a bit too busted, then fear not not because the quirk it does have some serious weaknesses to it and there are risks that come with the quirk. The first is that it requires physical touch which depending on how strong your opponent is or how their quirk works that might be a problem for you and then there are other issues in that it's a knowledge based issue in that you need to know the name of your target. If you don't know their name then you're not going to be able to say the name of the target to activate the quirk on them. Another thing is that when you have a target that has a internal conflict that has a issue with true sense herself, that becomes a problem for Star and Stripe because she has to have an understanding of the target's true identity and align it with their own. So for instance, if the target is questioning their own sense of self, their identity if you will, then the quirk itself won't apply to them. Like say if you drop Star and Stripe into the world of Jujutsu Kaisen and you have Yuji fight against Star and Stripe and Yuji was in a battle internally where he's doubting himself and he's questioning whether or not he is Yuji Itadori or whether or not he's Sukuna. The rules imposed by New Order, they will not apply to him if this ends up being the case. It's for this reason that this quirk is best used when applied to inanimate, non-living objects because they're much easier to set rules upon because a rocket or a laser beam, it will always be a rocket or a laser beam. It doesn't change its identity, thus it makes it easier for the user quirk on objects such as that. There are also limitations to her New Order quirk as well in that she can't just use the quirk on herself and become this nigh unstoppable being with immeasurable power. She can't just become continuously stronger like someone like the Hulk who gets super strong based on how powerful his anger is. There is a limit to how much more powerful that Star and Stripe can become using New Order. Think of it like always hitting an invisible glass ceiling. She can constantly raise her power but she will always hit that limit when using the effects of the quirk because she's limited in how much stronger she can make herself using it. For example, she always kept the rule in place to give herself the superhuman attributes that she has but we know for a fact that she will always be weaker than Prime All Might. Now, for those of you guys who might be curious, you might be sitting there power scaling, doing the number crunches and etc. You might be thinking to yourself, just how much stronger can she make herself? How much weaker is she than All Might? Well, there's enough information to give us a rough estimation as to how close she got to Prime All Might and power when you read into what the lore is telling us. So when she battles Shigaraki, who is using 98% of the full power of All for One, she was more than holding her own in that battle against Shigaraki in that fight. And being honest, she had the edge at times when they were battling. There's a reason that All For One goes is she's allowed to team up with Deku. Even if All For One reached 100% power, it wouldn't be a case of maybe this duo of Star and Stripe and Deku could win a battle. It would be a guaranteed certainty. There was no doubt in his mind that that duo would come out on top. Being able to scale up to a comparable level of 98% of All For One's power, it immediately puts you well within the top 1% of 
1% of the top 1% of the world of My Hero Academia. The other issue that she runs into with this quirk is that she can only use two rules at a time. So before she can use a third rule in a fight, she needs to release one of the two rules that are already in effect. So she cannot use a rule that would arbitrarily affect another target that she hadn't touched yet by using a sneaky method with the words like say she touches the water or she touches the air. She can't then just make a rule that if you touch the air or the water, you go into a coma or your heart stops beating or you die. It doesn't work that way. So despite its weaknesses, when people like All for One and All Might, they're praising your power of your quirk, you're in possession of something pretty nasty with a lot of potential. And this is where the real world inspiration behind her quirk comes into play and why it's so overpowered and why I personally love this quirk the most out of all of them in the series. So if you're familiar with the Japanese concept of Kododama, then you're probably already making a solid connection to what her quirk can do and what the inspiration behind it was and how it already worked even before I got finished explaining the quirk itself. So keeping it very short, Kododama is the Japanese belief that each word, it has its own powers and each word itself is rooted in the combined words of Kodo, which means speech and Tama, which means spirit or soul, but it's pronounced as Dama when you put those words together. So in Japanese Shinto stories, Kododama was used in several cases with a lot of the Shinto gods and in some of the folklore, Kododama was used to enchant spells that characters use. In series like Yu Yu Hakusho, some of the characters in the chapter Black Saga use Kododama. You saw it in series like Inuyasha. In real world, you see it in martial arts with Aikido. It was based specifically and created in order to practice Kododama itself. The quirk was powerful enough that the United States government, it kept all the details of the quirk as top secret information. And when it came to a moment where Shigaraki was going on his rampage that you saw in the last season, there were those within the government who did not want Star and Stripe to go anywhere near that battle because as you can tell, the quirk is overpowered to a point where all but one said himself, if it stood against them, it would be their biggest obstacle to the domination. But if the quirk was stolen per se, he'd be able to take over without any type of issues. Now, New Order has three ultimate moves at its disposal. The first we'll go over is the state-of-the-art hypersonic intercontinental cruise punch, which occurred when she touched the missiles and used them to redirect them using the giant air-created avatar of herself to start swinging them around and throw a giant air punch to shoot off that monster explosion. Now, her next ultimate move is the fist bump to air, which is what makes the aforementioned avatar that is a thousand times larger than herself, and it's made up of the air that she touched, and it dishes out insanely powerful blows at the enemy with amplified strength. This ultimate move was strong enough that it gave Shigaraki quite a bit of trouble during their fight, and just by clapping her hands together, she made enough force that it parted the clouds in the area. Her third and final ultimate move is Kurano, which is used after making the air avatar of herself, and she guides the lasers of the fighter jets around her to make a giant weapon of energy that can be used to stab and in most cases it will destroy her target by burning them this quirk though when she uses it it's required for her to turn off her constantly activated rule of having superhuman abilities this ultimate move though when she uses it it requires her to turn off her constantly activated rule of having superhuman abilities which in turn it makes her more vulnerable but given the benefits of her ultimate moves it's a more than a fair trade-off as you can see while her quirk is pretty versatile and the buff to the superhuman strength rule gives you insane physical stats from speed to strength and agility and just by looking at it you're able to better appreciate and realize how much of a monster prime all might was prime all for one was and by extension how powerful deku and shigaraki have gotten this one i personally love it's one of again my favorite quirks of the series if not my favorite quirk even though the time we spend with it it isn't super long it did give me enough to say that i would be totally down for a star and strike spinoff manga but until that day comes if it ever does truly come it's a good thing that my hero academia is a bit of a lore pit and videos like the one you see on the screen cover that information in detail